The taxi business in Montego Bay, Jamaica. When I tell you the system is broken, watch this video. The system is broken. Maybe somebody can unbreak it. The facilitator MD. Out of town Chase those crazy ball heads Out of our town I and I built the cabin I and I plant the corn Didn't my people before me Slave for this country now you look me with that scorn And you eat up all my corn We gonna chase those crazy Chase them crazy Chase those crazy ball heads out of our town The Facilitator MD Back at you again This week we talk about corruption. We talk about power taking advantage of those without power. We return to where the Facilitator MD channel all began a little less than two years ago, the island country of Jamaica, West Indies. On a recent visit there, I spoke to some indigenous Jamaicans men and women who serve tourists coming in and out of the country every day as taxi drivers. What we did was we listened to some of the taxi drivers talk about their challenges in this system that we discussed in the first video is a billion dollar industry. How do taxi drivers who are responsible for taking tourists all over the island. How are they surviving under the weight of this billion dollar industry? Are they making money hand over fist? Are they able to provide for their families? Are they able to contribute to society by placing and fusing money back into the economy from the money they receive as taxi drivers? They should, right? The amount of money that transits through Jamaica from tourists is probably more than any other industry they have. But what we learned is, like many other countries, practically all countries in the world, there is a level of wrongdoing and corruption that is truly affecting the way taxi drivers live. Additionally, if you go to Jamaica, you may notice that, man, those taxi prices are high. Coming from the United States, if I'm traveling a quarter mile, even by Uber, even by black car, it wouldn't cost me 40 to $60. But in Montego Bay, I found that to be the case. Why is that? Is gas that expensive? Maybe. Maybe that's not the only story. Maybe it's not just that cars are expensive, gas is expensive, but maybe there's a trickle down from corruption that you, the tourist, must now pay for. The taxi business in Montego Bay, Jamaica. Corruption at its finest. The Facilitator MD. <laughs> Thank you.
name is Barry. I'm quite sure a lot of you that's gonna be viewing this knows me. I'm a Jamaican born and um, I went in tourism about from 04. I started tourism. Why? Because I thought at that time that would be the best thing that could happen to a Jamaican is actually indulging in the tourism sector. I choose transportation. Blessing, bogus focus. Well, I've been in the tourism industry for many, many years as a driver. My name is Percy. I'm a tour operator. I'm in the business for more than 50 years. And right now, I am a vice president of an association. Over the years, I've been working diligently to the cruise ships, as well as from the hotels, transferring tourism back and forth to their destination. I also thought I was an ambassador in regards to a Jamaican transporter in the tourism sector. But what I, become to, what I come to find out over the years is that something went terribly wrong. In the beginning of 2004, it was okay. It was fine. I had pride. I had willpower energy. And I had a drive. Tourism. Yes, man. My family can indulge in tourism. My kids can indulge in tourism. But what I begin to see after the years went by is that slowly but surely, we started being abandoned. We started seeing that there was a big change in the sector, that no one no, no longer had care or concern about we who are the ambassadors on the island to actually welcome our guests as coming into the island. From the inception of the tourism, and hotel, Michael Manley Grant drivers. That was only Juta before J. Cal and Maxi came into inception. So Grung Transportation originally belongs to Juta. Now you have J. Cal and Maxi, so you would understand that it's supposed to belong to Juta, J. Cal and Maxi. When Juta got the park in 1973, Mr. Michael Manley, the then Prime Minister, said the park should share among the members of Juta because back then you had only Juta. There was no Maxine or Jekyll back then, right? And the park should have shared among the members. So what he said is that the members should stay at the park and if the managers or whoever wanted to go somewhere, they take them. It was no peer system. In the beginning, when I first started, the number, the decal number that we have on our vehicle, that number is for whenever a resort is being built, right? The government used to um, issue or make sure that the heads of the companies issue out park space for transportation from that particular hotel. Now, how you get placed is depending on the number that you have on your vehicle. If you're number one, number one gets a slot at that park. If you're number two, number two gets a slot at that park, right? And there was no cost at that time. It just depends on what number you have, determine which slot you go into when you go in the hotel park. Now a slot actually means that you get a chance to park at a hotel in your uniform with your vehicle fully licensed and given the opportunity to do transportation to excursions from the hotel there to the excursions and back to the hotel for a price. What I've begun to see over the years is that that number doesn't mean anything anymore. Why? Because it's not a matter of when a park comes available, depending on your number, you get placed into a park. No, that went out the window. Since lately, these people come in and start selling the park. They start um, doing by secret first, and then real. Right? So if you don't have money, you don't get any other park. Most driver don't have a park because park start to sell. Now we born and growing at the ghetto, and from I 
living at the ghetto. No man has never taken a gun or a knife and stick me up, I jack me, for rob me. But I personally feel that paying $5,000 for a park is robbery with aggravation. So I never buy a park because I don't understand that. And apart from that, when you buy the park, you have to pay rental every month. So I don't understand that. And it started off at 2005, then it went to 35, then it went to 5,000. Today, right now, it's 6,500 US dollars for one somebody to own a park. It's also $300 a month on top of that 6,500 Jamaican dollars. One of the hotels is Princess. Another one is Rio, Royal Ten. The, the, the guys who are getting the opportunity to pick up passengers at these hotels, they're paying these $3,000, $6,000 fees. Where are these guys coming from that they have this money? Because that is big money. Where are they getting that money to pay for these parks? Well, most of the guys who get the money, they are scammers. So they would all sell it to their scamming friend. Right? Have people then go look low at the bank to go and get the park. But when one person have four or five, six parks, what you do is lease the park to other people who are around who needed to get a park to make some money. The hotels that are building now, there's no protection to protect we drivers here on the island in regards to where transportation is concerned. Right. The parks should share among the three associations. In the original stage, nobody was paying for park until not too long they start selling the park. So you used to just make sure you, say you have the park and maintain the park, take care of the name management and whoever when they come and take them where they want to go without charging them. Instead of paying this money, we shouldn't be paying any money. It should be free. We have carnival that comes to Montego Bay. Royal Caribbean goes to Falmouth. Usually a ship holds anywhere from 2,500 people to 3,500 people and above. These are tourists on a cruise ship. When a cruise ship is coming into Montego Bay, their shore excursion managers that's on those cruise ships that's selling attractions. It's called pre-booked. These pre-booked passengers, when the ship reaches Montego Bay or its destination here on the island, whether it's Falmouth, Old Trios, or Montego Bay, they have a ban to show that they're pre-booked. When the respective companies, Jacob, Drew, and Maxi, when the respective companies line up in that cruise ship yard, we are on the list who can go in and who is not on that list, can't actually go in the yard to pick up any guests. But there's a thing called freelance and there's a thing called pre-book line. The freelance is for the small drivers that's actually for the people that's not pre-booked, that hasn't been sold from the ship, that does not have on a ban, those people are supposed to go directly over to the freelance line. You have hundreds of drivers lined up waiting to move those people, to carry them to their destination. The ship is here only from roughly from 7 o'clock in the morning until around maybe 5 o'clock in the evening. With exceptions that you have other ships or winter ships, you might want to leave 9, 10 o'clock. But the, the guests are not out on the road until 9, 10 o'clock. Okay, they usually have a time to be back on the ship. The point is, is that when that ship comes into Montego Bay and the pre-booked, individual guests that have on the ban on their wrist to show that they've been booked on the ship when they get inside the terminal in montego bay and quite a few other places a few other um docks here on the island they are being shuffled by these big companies into these big buses under the disguise that these are um pre-booked people but they run out of ban so now they don't have no ban but they are moving in lines, hundreds of people still going into these buses. While we freelance drivers is waiting in vain. 
we have to get up five o'clock in the morning. We have to be in that shipyard before the ship comes. Our uniform have to be iron. Our bus have to be squeaky clean. We're waiting for guests. You have people from around the island, drivers from around the island, actually wind up in that shipyard to see if they can earn a day's bread or a, or a living for that day. The amount of people that comes off that ship, at least 500 to at least maybe 700 drivers should have a work that's on that freelance line. That's never the case because what's been happening is that even though the, the, they have pre-booked and the pre-book goes out, you still have a large amount of people, hundreds of people still coming out on the disguise of pre-book, but they ran out of band. They ran out of armband. So you see a whole bunch of people walking to these vehicles with no band on, but yet still they're pre-booked. Our freelance line is stagnated, maybe about two, three, two, three blocks, drivers waiting to get in to earn a bread. And they're taking everything away from us in regards to where that is concerned. Again, we need protection for stuff like that. I expect the, the, um, the investor supposed to call the tourism minister and say, listen, based on the occupancy of tourists that we're going to have, I believe we need about 60 transportation. Then the Jamaica, the, um, the tourism minister, call the, J, the, um, the Junta president, the JK president and the Maxi president and say, listen, the investor said, we need 60 motor vehicles. So, we need 20 from Juta, 20 from Jekyll, 20 from Maxi. That's exactly how it's supposed to go. It's not going like that. We can no longer be happy in tourism. We can no longer bring that money back to the community because it's, we're, we're being turned into slaves, in a sense. Me think personally, not only the man where they sell the park, but me think say, the government, it's a conspiracy of what is going on. So they are aiding and abetting criminality. Because one thing, if I am the Minister of Tourism, and I know that Jamaica, we don't have oil, all we have down here is tourism. And if tourism is our main income, and whenever time that businessmen like investors coming in to our country to invest, in tourism, I think it's an integral part about the, the government, the, the Jamaica Tourist Board, um, JTB, which fall on the Jamaica Tourist Board, which we are all as drivers, um, the Minister of Tourism and Minister of Transportation. Them supposed to make certain that whenever an investor come here, the first thing they say, listen, ground transportation belongs to the ordinary Jamaican citizen. So Judah, Jekyll, and Maxi must be priority. We're basically at the rim where it's either or either. We need assistance. We need assistance and we need assistance now. Some man from nowhere where we don't know a cell park. So and the park where they sell in a cell by the owner of the hotel. So we don't understand that neither. And then you want to tell me, say the Minister of Tourism is doing an effective job. Every time anything happens in any sector, if a transportation, you have to talk to the man who is a minister of transportation. If a tourism, you fall under the minister of tourism. So how can a man a sell park and you know how we have that? We're supposed to be protected. We're not supposed to be, um, 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 what do you call it, extorted. That's a, that's a form of extortion. You know, because you have to pay these high prices, five, six, three thousand dollars $3,000 for a park, U.S. money. Where's all this money going? Is the government getting earning, getting any of this money? Is any of this money reaching the community? That should never have happened. Because your job is to make the investor know that say, listen, whenever you're ready for ground transportation, I am responsible for that. So you call me the Minister of Tourism, and then I call the Juta president, the Jekyll president, and the Maxi president, and I said, listen, I need 60 vehicles, 20 from each one. And then the people, like us, the driver, get the opportunity to go and there and, and, and do and carry people from one place to the next. And then if the management say, each month you pay 100 US dollars or anything like that, it's understandable because we are utilizing the space. But when a man can tell you, say, if you give him 5,000 US dollars, and then every month you still have to pay for him, you have to pay rent, that is a bit 
aiding and abetting criminality and raise the minister towards him. So he's not doing a good job. So based on what we see, he must have pulled up him sacks. What it's becoming is now, it's a dog eat dog. The bigger companies actually swoop in, take all the work, and leave us to fend for ourselves in the drivers. Leave us at the heart and mercy of the, 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 the companies that's from abroad, that's working here in Jamaica, in the tourism sector. So what I'd like to ask our government, what happened to the protection for us drivers? We have been so bombarded with so many outside entities like Uber, right? You have the big companies that's actually they have no regard for the small guys, which is us. We're the ambassadors. We are the majority that actually make up the tourism sector. Not one or two companies. We, the small man, thousands of us, actually do the transportation across the island. Welcome the guests. Wine and dine the guests so they'll want to come back for more. Every hotel that you go, every time you go there, when you go um, to the bar, you see all the big guys. Remember, you know, tourism, how we, the small man, started. And when we are dealing with tourism, these rich guys say tourism a dirty, a rust and jiggle one, um, all kind of, them style with the most way, and send for them pitney, go to university for to lie and doctor, Indian and chief. And then all of a sudden, the whole of them come out and take over tourism business where they say a dirty foot and jiggle and rust and rent out with and kill these people. They want to take over the business. And these young guys, when you go to the um, hotel at them a feed them this up front. When the Jota Jekal and Maxi this they were originally tourism. Oh uh, no, it can't be found. So we the original man disintegrating at in here. And these guys who used to look down on us, them can't take you over. So as you walk from the bar, as you come at the bar and look around, you see four, five, six different desks are uh, all uh, these guys. Where these guys came from. You have some of these hotels right now that's telling you, no, 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 no. You can't have a 2015 vehicle. You have to have a brand new Beamer. You have to have a Benz. High-end vehicles on some of these parks only. So I want to ask JTB, when this became factual that an entity can tell you that you have to have a certain type of vehicle that has to be brand new or, or a Beamer or a Benz or an Audi to be able to have a park when you've been licensed for 20 years. So we're just working in the hotel now just to pay the hotel fee, right? To pay the, these, these so-called owners or these so-called general managers of these hotels that's collecting millions of US dollars off of us. And we now see no benefits. We are seeing hardships, right? Our picnic can't get the things they used to get from us as operators, as tour operators, right? We can't go grocery no more and buy the things we used to buy. If we, can, if we, if we used to buy a tree bag, it gone down to two or one bag. No investor supposed to deal with nothing named ground, trans, ground transportation. And based on what I have heard with men in our surrounding, I've spoken to a lawyer. And the lawyer said, what Michael Manley have put down in place from them time there, it is still grounded and have solid background to that, solid validation. So in other words, we are saying, this minister of tourism or any other one must make certain tell these guys that came here you know have no talk with ground transportation your job is to make certain that you bring tourists come out this country because if you notice you know all of the money no stay at jamaica you know when them book them people the money stay for them um, country we now become the mercy of the hotel people and actually I would say partially the government because it ain't that they don't know what's going on. So I ask our government, what are they going to do for us as drivers? Do they know that these parks have been selling for these elaborate prices? If they want to do business with us, because listen, we are not begging them fear for either. Because no man not spending a million or a billion or 800 US dollars if you now make 10 billion. So when you come here, you have to apply by our rules and regulations or else you can't come here. So the first job, you, you as a minister of tourism, you must tell them, if you're coming to Jamaica, your job is to make certain to get people in a hotel, go transportation, no business with you in a your portfolio. It belongs to the real Jamaican people. And the first man who must have that talk 
Judah, which fall, and Jacob and Matthew, which are under umbrella. So we can work with it right there. So, but all of these guys from nowhere, they have to pull up them, them socks. Jamaica had so much, um, what you call, statements against them in regards to advising people not to come here, but they come here anyway. Why? Because they want to experience the real Jamaican. They want to experience the beauty of Jamaica. They want to, they want to experience our Jamaican culture. And I'm asking the tourism minister, the minister of transport, and the prime minister, say, listen, you see, if him not do the right thing, him have big problem. If he, because right now with I, me know in a green, me know, when I speak, I speak like a Marcus Garvey student. So when I speak the truth, I not talk about PNP or JLP, because any party in a power, because Marcus Garvey said to them, don't give the white man the job that the black man is capable of doing. But anytime you give the black man the job and he doesn't see to it that the social well-being of the poor man is prioritized by him agenda, you must burn him, his wife, and his entire family. So this not have nothing to do with green or red. As long as you're here to do the job of the people, at that may are different. So with a PNP, or GLP, as long as you make certain that the social well-being of the poor people is prioritized by your agenda, 100%. So as long as them ready to come back to the table and make certain talk to the investors and make them know much clock and say, listen, as of now, this ground transportation belongs to Juta, Jekyll and Maxi and any other man else can get for them share. We don't fight against nobody. We vote for government officials ministers and so forth our vote collectively right we vote we vote for betterment we vote for being able to enjoy our hard earning money but no there's no more enjoyment it's pure hardship i thought over the years the more you work or the longer you work over the years the easier it become and the little bit more money you make it's the opposite now. The more you work, the less money you make. And there's a reason for that. There's no protection, nothing in writing that I see that is actually covers we tour operators. Park selling must stop instantaneously. That is the part where we want the tourism minister and the minister of transport for knows that as of we speak now. We are disgruntled as driver because we don't know if we find them the money there. If we go pay 5,000 for park and we're not aiding and abetting criminality because that is a conspiracy to defraud with fund and uh, we don't know by which means. We're talking a small little park as small as the Cameron. We go down to Princess. From a, from start from a 2,000 hotel room to maybe a six or 300 hotel room. Okay? They're being sold. You have, with no exception, you have a few that is not being sold. But the majority are being sold, especially the ones that are all building now. We're talking, there's price out there already for Hard Rock Cafe. There's price out there for Royalton. There's price out there for Rio. Secrets, all of them. They're all being sold to us drivers. That has to stop. Where's our protection? Righteousness exalt in the Asian, but sin is a report. And that we have to say, you know. So, all in all, we just want everything set straight. And we will love it. And we don't care if you're green. And we don't care if you're red. And we don't care if you're blue. Just do the right thing. And ancestor the people, our original people lives. And everything will be good.